So welcome everybody. Welcome to Balancing the Pituitary Gland. Today is November the 9th, 2023. Um, this is the, we're continuing on the um, endocrine system. So this time we are working with the other major gland within our brain, which is the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland actually works with the hypothalamus, which is our topic last week. They, they work to, together. Um, the, there are some hormones with that the pituitary gland would store, but it's uh, actually it's the hypothalamus gland that makes those hormones, but they are not secreted by the hypothalamus gland, actually. The pituitary gland stored it the pituitary gland has two has the front lobe and the back lobe so the front lobe is is for making the hormones that are specific for the pituitary gland and then the back lobe is for storing some of the the, the hormones that the hypothalamus would make and when it's needed then the pituitary gland would actually be secreting it to um, control the other endocrine um, glands that is further downstream from the from the head so that's what we're going to talk about today is just just um maybe in uh, 15 20 minutes talking about what the the um, pituitary glands and the hormones um that is secreted by the pituitary gland is for and then we'll go most of the majority of the time, we'll just be doing a, um, a healing session to talk of, to just um, start to balance the pituitary gland. So before we start, though, I would like to just have everybody into a more, um, just a presence meditation, just a couple of minutes presence meditation. So let's begin by just taking in a deep breath. So breathe in through your nose deeply. And let it all go. And as you breathe out, just relax your body, especially um, shoulder areas, neck area, where we tend to hold a lot of the stress within our body. And then breathe in again through the nose. And then as we breathe out, just let go and relax our body. Allow your body to straighten out. I don't know about everybody else, but for myself, I tend to hunch my back a little bit, especially around the shoulder and neck area during the day because there are stress that a lot of times I'm not even aware of. So now is the time to just Pay attention to those areas within your body and allow your body to just unravel itself naturally through relaxing. Continue to breathe in and out, following your own rhythm, but just have the intention that you want to elongate your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And continue to breathe in and out a few more times just to give your body extra time to relax. And when you feel your body more relaxed, then set the intention that you want to relax your mind as well. Just 
whenever thoughts come in, just don't even bother. Don't even bother to resist them. Don't even bother to do anything about it. Just let it come in and let it leave whenever those thoughts are ready to leave. And after a while, you may find your thoughts calming down a little. And that's when you know to shift your focus into your heart. And when you shift your focus into your heart, then set the intention that you want to breathe in pure love. Pure love for yourself, for this wonderful body that you have that is absolutely amazing machine that allows you to interact with this reality, to be a part of this playground. To actually have a human experience. And as you fill your body with pure love, you're also connecting with your true self. Your true self is simply joy, light, love. Your true self, it's this adventurous explorer that comes here on Earth, on this playground, where this, the reality game here is pretty intensive and amazing. So just feel that pure love that is part of who you truly are as your essence. And connect with that joy, light, love that is who you truly are. And feel that seamless co-creation with your body. And when you feel that connection that love. That joy, light, love. You're within yourself. And just take a deep breath in. To ground it into your body. Connect with this playground. Mother Earth. And have Mother Earth, your body, your essence, your connection to the rest. Of the universe, all in alignment. And then you can come all the way back 
into the room. And welcome back. It was great one. Thank you, Winnie. You are welcome. Yes, yeah, nice to have this um, short reminder, short but deep reminder of our connection to ourselves. So as promised, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the uh, pituitary gland, just to give the um, books. Okay, let me just... Make this smaller so I can see my notes. Okay, so the pituitary gland is actually a very small gland. However, size does not matter in this instant because the, the pituitary, gland, pituitary gland is actually just a pea size, like very small gland that is um, kind of in the middle of our brain and it's it's uh, surrounded by all the other um, brain matter, and um, it's and the pituitary gland is just a little bit below the hypothalamus, and it's um, it's a big part. It's a, it plays a big role within the endocrine system, and it actually um, makes a whole at least five, six different endo, um, hormones. And ho what are hormones? Hormones are um, kind of just um, chemicals. So these chemicals tells different parts of the body what to do, when to, uh, and when to do it. So for example, one of the um, pituitary glands hormone is the it is called the ACTH. I don't know the, the full name for it, but it actually regulates our stress response, including our blood pressure, blood sugar levels, metabolism, and also um, it helps our body to reduce inflammation. So all of that just, um, and the ACTH actually um, would affect how our um, um, adrenal glands would respond to stress and all that. So that's how the, the one of the ways that the pituitary gland actually works with the other endocrine gland within, glands within our body. Um, Let's see. So there are a couple of really major functions that the pituitary gland um, is in charge of. So I've talked about stress response. There is also metabolism, which is how our body transforms an energy from the food we eat. So uh, it actually part of the, the pituitary, pituitary gland is to regulate um, our like how we store fat and how we are able to um, be able to I would say it, it regulates our weight as well so and the other things is a major function is uh, reproduction so what are some of the functions it is um, it affects how our um, Reproductive organs, uh, really development of our reproductive organs. And then also um, it controls lactation. So after we give birth, then it affects our lactation for, for, um, for the body that is uh, that needed to create the milk for um, our children. And then there is also the before we give birth, there is also it it, um, it secretes hormone that 
regulates and timing of our um, childbirth and labor. So that period of time, so all of that. So reproduction, um, metabolism, stress, and uh, also it's about water and sodium balance within our body as well. And also the pituitary gland also secretes hormones to help us help um, young, I would say, help us grow. So there's the, the growth hormones that's also secreted by the, or regulated by the pituitary gland. So there are at least three or four major functions that the pituitary gland is responsible for. And let's see, so um, the pituitary gland affects the adrenals, affects the gonads, which is reproductive organs, and it regulates the thyroid. Um, yeah, so, so those really major, those are the major other endocrine glands that the pituitary gland would regulate. So I think that's that's really all about the more physical side of the pituitary gland that I would like to talk about. Of course, um, the pituitary gland, there is the, I would say the more metaphysical side of the pituitary gland, which is to receive information and to interpret um, downloads from outside. So that's also part of the pituitary gland that is more um, metaphysical and esoteric use of what the pituitary, pituitary gland is for. It's a tongue twister. <laughs> that's all I can say. So these are really um, some of the that's all really I want to, what I want to say about the pituitary gland itself. So um, any questions, comments before I go on to actually start doing something about the pituitary gland? All good? Okay. Question. Yeah, sure. Um... Is it the same as third eye, the function, the, the esoteric function, same as third eye? We say the third eye, but the third eye is not just the, it's not just the pituitary gland. It is, um, there is a pituitary chakra, which is not quite the same. Um, it's, it's a little bit bigger than the, the, so the blend itself is yes and no, because it, it does not function, like none of our body function on its own. The pituitary gland actually works with a few other glands, like, namely the, the pineal gland, which we haven't talked about yet, to really perform the, the third eye. And also the third eye is not the only esoteric eye that we have. We actually have a few eyes besides our physical eyes. We actually have a few esoteric eyes. There's the real eye, um, so there, so there are different parts of the, like there, there's one that is just hairline, and then there's one that's here, just below the the third eye, and then there's the third eye, and um, so, mm. and so it's the third eye is actually just a short hand of like esoteric. Eye, but there's actually a few third eyes. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Okay, so um, how do we access the third eye? So if you use the tip of your tongue and you start to use the tip of your tongue to push up in the upper, um, the upper part of your mouth. So from the teeth onwards, you start to use the tip of your tongue to move backwards in the midline you will start to, at first, you know, there's some bumpy parts of your, like where your teeth um, is, and then it's a little bumpy. And then if you go for a little further back, maybe about an inch and a half back, it starts to get um, smoother. But before it gets to the, um, the back of the throat, and you would feel that there is a slight bulge, a little bump. Do you feel that? Okay, so use the tip of your tongue to massage that. So that part of your upper um, palate, your mouth, is actually energetically, uh, it, there is actually nerve endings that connect that to your pituitary gland. So when you start to use the tip of your tongue to kind of go back and forth and massage that, that little bump in your upper, um, like the, the upper part of your mouth, you would be able to- Behind the teeth? Behind the teeth, yes. Mm -hmm. Palate is the word. Yeah. Upper palate, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. So when you touch it, when you find that spot, you will, um, and you start to, to, to massage that spot, what I feel is I actually, I can feel my pituitary gland just um, getting more active. It kind of wakes up your pituitary gland. And so I want you all to try to do that now because, um, well, yes, what I want you all to do is actually get in touch with your own pituitary gland so that I can start to also get in touch with that and start to figure out what's going on and what's what the pituitary gland actually of all of us together needs in order to um, feel more expanded and balanced. It's so interesting that you said about tongue and position because I think uh, on a face yoga that our tongue supposed to glue to the upper palate, do not touch the teeth, but glue it. So it's support this bone upper jawline. And it's it's our right position of our tank. Mm -hmm. Now I know that it support pituitary gland. After a while, you actually would feel Oh, I feel how I feel is I actually start to feel happy and blissed out when I do that for um, a, like a little bit longer. So maybe after a minute or so, I would start to feel oh, light and fluffy. <laughs> so that's something that you can try when you need a pick me up. So when I do that, when I start to tune into all of our, so this is collectively, and I'm also including everyone else that will in, so not just 
in this moment. So when they, whomever they may be, that finds this video on YouTube and see it as well. So those people are included into this because we are actually all connected. Our patterns are connected, even though our body may not be connected. So what I felt was actually a heaviness on my heart. So I actually just want to guide everybody into the opening up the four diaphragms that I, as I mentioned, I think, yeah, last week and the week before as well, we have, besides our main primary diaphragm, we actually have three others as well. So the first one is the cranial one. So you don't actually need to know where it is because I'm kind of the proxy for all of you. So just know that it is the cranial one that I'm working on now. So let's do a, if you want to follow along, is to do a figure eight with your eyes. So how to do that? I for me, I look, I get my, both my eyes without moving my head. I would have both my eyes look up to the right upper corner. And just stay there a bit. Because there seems to be some processing that needed to be done there. And then it starts to calm down and I would move my eyes from the right upper to down to right lower corner. To the left lower, yeah. Yep. So from there and then to the floor or as low as you can look down without moving your head. Here I feel a lot of release going on. So as we are doing this, just remember to breathe. And then it seems to be calmer now. So let's move up to the lower up and corner. Use your eyes to look. Upper left hand corner. So it's kind of moving diagonally. And then move down to the lower left hand corner. And then diagonally back up to the right upper hand corner. Okay, so that's the cranial diaphragm. And just feel your head area kind of shifting energy there. And 
then the next diaphragm is the thoracic. So it's around the neck area. The same thing, use your eyes to do that figure eight. And take your time. So upper right hand corner, use your eyes to look up there. And when it feels calm, and then just move down to the <clears throat> lower right. And breathe in. This one seems to be clearer, not as much processing. So move up to the left upper hand corner. And then down to the left lower hand corner. A lot of release here. You can actually feel the uh, intestine, stomach area, responding. And then back up to the upper right hand corner, looking up there to finish off the infinity sign. Just feel your thoracic area, neck area. Softening. And then let's do the primary diaphragm, which is the one, the big one that we have between the heart and stomach area. There's that, our primary diaphragm. It's the same thing. Up to the right. Down the right side. And then up to the left. And a lot of release here. Up to the left. And down on the left. Some emotions coming up. Well, let's bring in the emotional. Um, Thing, bring in the emotional health module then. And then completing that one is 
back up to the right. I'm still feeling a lot of emotions coming up because we are doing the heart and so we're releasing some emotions from the heart here. So yeah, just breathe in pure love for yourself, for your experience, for your life, for your hopes and dreams. Breathe in pure love and let go of anything that you're ready to let go of as you breathe out. And now let's do the, the fourth diaphragm, which is the pelvic diaphragm. So same thing. Do the um, infinity sign with your eyes. So eyes up to the right. Breathe in to your pelvic diaphragm. And set the intention that you want to shift your pelvic diaphragm to allow more connection with Mother Earth, with the organic matrix, the organic system of Mother Earth. And then down to, on the right side, down on the right. Then love to Mother Earth and feel love from Mother Earth. Feel the support from Mother Earth. And then up to the left. Just remember that Mother Earth has your back. And down on the left. You yourself being taken care of because you are a child of Mother Earth. Feel that love from Mother Earth. 
all around you, holding your body tightly. And back up to the right. And just do a few deep breaths in and out and feel your central energy. And just feel the energy coming in. I'm feeling a kind of like a there's some blockage in the neck area. So let's just still around this area. So let's find out what is going on there. How many patterns are we dealing with? six patterns there. Okay. And let's start to Work with these patterns. Stick to them. So one of the patterns that I am hearing is it's kind of a global anxiety. Do something about that. So it's a morphic field world anxiety pattern. One. Okay. So let's... Okay, so just breathe. As we start to unravel that part of that pattern. There's some guilt and shame pattern in there as well. blood sugar balance pattern I 
as a father principle and distortions. This, for whatever reason, is very prevalent, I find. Maybe because we are coming out of the patriarchal um, system, the old system. So that pattern, that distortion pattern comes up a lot. So you don't have to do anything except pay attention to what's going on in your body. Especially where you find some, where in your midline that you find some blockage. How you are doing? So far, so good. So, should we continue to do figure eight with our eyes, or not? No, you. So, um, no, you. We, um, so for we did once for each of the four diagrams. So that's that's good. Okay. Thank you. I developed a headache. Okay. When I was doing the uh, loops. It's better now, but it was just really bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have six eye muscle when when they vary um you know under tension, you can have uh, you can have headache when you do eye exercise. Yeah, your eye muscles are actually um, very much connected to your nervous system. Yeah, that, that makes sense, yeah. So how often do we do these or should we do, do them regularly? Um, do these. What do you mean by these? The eye exercises. Eye exercises. For for the uh, the four types. Okay. Um. For those four, there is no set rule. It's like I, I usually would do it when I'm, um, so when you feel that your energy is kind of stag stagnant, then I would do that because when you open up those four, like doing the eye pattern actually open up those four diaphragms and those four diagram diaphragms is actually regulating the energy flow within your body. So when you feel that, especially if you have a headache, then yes, do the do the do that. Um, open up the four diaphragms, or if you feel like you are somehow you feel um, stuck energy, then give that a try. That just by opening your four diaphragms that may 
already shift your energy enough that you don't have to do anything else. So how often depends on your energy level. It depends on what you're dealing with in your body. So just have to say. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, these are very powerful. I so feel heavy heart. <laughs> okay, so let's do something about the something more about the heart then. Okay. Okay, what's going on with the heart? It's not the physical heart. It's actually um, one of the valves of the heart. It's that pattern, one of the valves of the heart. Okay, so let's shift that. How many patterns? <laughs> okay. That's, that's at least 12, 13 patterns in there. Okay. Good. And that's... What are you going to do? We're still working with hot energy. Okay. So... Um, we what we are all doing is actually shifting quantum um, patterns. Should we just concentrate on um, on a heart, or what we should do? Breathe. Okay. Let's focus on bringing energy um, in and out. Because your body already knows how to shift the pattern. Okay. I need to bring in an archangel. That's what I'm getting. Okay. So which archangel? Yes, we do. Oh, that's good. Rainbow seraphim. Okay. Let's call in the rainbow seraphim. That works.
now we are actually going to work on <laughs> we are actually getting to the um pituitary gland finally ready to do that What we should do? Nothing. Mm. Okay. So what I'm doing, what I'm doing now is, so all you need to do is simply just breathe in and out. So what I'm doing is actually working on the. Um, the sphenoid and the occipital. So between those two bones within our body is um, where the pituitary gland is. So I'm moving the cerebral um, spinal fluid just to clear the pituitary gland and balance it. So that is what I am doing now. Just sending out energy to assist all of you to work on balancing the pituitary gland. It's important to keep your shoulders as relaxed as possible because when you tight, tight up, tighten up your shoulders, you are blocking the flow of energy to your pituitary gland or other endocrine glands that are within your, between your head and your body, the rest of the body, so.
Okay. I'm actually feeling a shift now. How is everybody else doing? Feel good. Yeah. Feels good. Yeah, I'm actually feeling um, warmer. I'm always cold in the basement. Yeah, okay. I have coughing and hiccups. Okay. But the yes. hiccup might be the dinner that I ate. You have some water that you, you have some water handy. Okay, yeah, I'll go get it. Okay, got it. Okay. Intentional water. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I got really cold while we did that. Okay, so we are the reverse then. I I'm feeling hot, but hot? you guys are feeling cold. Yeah, but lots of pulsing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of um, things going on. Feel the cold. Hard at the beginning, and then not much anymore. <laughs> I have a problem with my relax, my silk. It's me. <laughs> so, just if you have trouble relaxing, then just you know, let your body know that you're safe. Let your body know you're in a safe space. Mm -hmm. Everything is okay. Send love to your body. I have this problem even daily life. It's I it's not relaxed. And the when meditation is getting worse. Oh my gosh. That's okay. Just be patient with your body. Um, when you are meditating, your body actually notice more. It's it notice more, so it's just reacting. And just Keep on breathing in and let your body know that it's fine. Everything is fine. For me, it was... I became extremely sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. Yeah. Congratulations, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I heard you have a new addition. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, six days today. <laughs> he's going to be his six days, Dominic. <laughs> wow. Nice name. Yeah. You have grandson? Yeah. Congratulations. Wow, nice. Six days old. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Yes. Dominic Raphael. That's oh that's the parents. Choice. I love that name. <laughs> yeah. Very hungry. He's very, very hungry. <laughs> that's a good sign. Yeah, yeah. that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm 
Yeah. This is your uh, your daughter's son. Yeah. Congratulations! It's her first so, child. You. First child. Second. 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 First. Uh, uh, oh. Three years old girl. That's very good that he's hungry. <clears throat> Born yeah. Born yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah. Danny, Danny was saying yesterday, or the other lady with them, Eva, that uh, if you have a C-section baby, because they're not uh, going through the channel, mm. and uh, have difficulties, uh, they kind of want everything done for them. Yeah, because they were removed from the fetus. Uh, whereas if you go through the channel, then the child has gone through a certain difficulty before. Yeah, no, she had it. Uh, she she had the baby actually at home with with my midwives. So. Oh, that is neat. <laughs> yeah, That's so neat. Good for her. Yeah. yeah mm. really cool. So you were there. No, I had to stay with the little one. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. But you were in the house, like? Uh, we went, we went away. <laughs> to give, to give the, to give them space and privacy and everything. Yeah, yeah. We don't have big houses like they used to have in the past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because the little one would have been very curious and she would, she would want to stay there. <laughs> yeah. I saw an old movie and at the end they were um, saying... Um, was, can we uh, focus okay. back on... Yeah, oh, oh, sorry. I thought we were done. No, we're not done. I'm oh. just, I just want to do one more thing. We're not okay. done. Okay. Thank you. Okay, let's do one more thing before we call it a day. Because uh, it feels not done. Okay, this one. Okay, I'm gonna call out some different body um, parts. Um, when I call them out, just um, focus on the area. And if you don't know where the area is, no worries, your body knows. So just keep on breathing in and out. Deep breaths in, deep breaths out. So brain is the first one. Hypothalamus is the second one.
the anterior pituitary, which is the front lobe of the pituitary. Pancreas. Duodenum, gut area, and then colon, all parts of your colon. And then do the infinity sign again with your eyes. So up to the right. Down on the right. Push. And up to the left. Down on the left. And then up to the right again. So um, I want you all to get the intention that you want to 
connect with yourself, with your true self. Because the, especially the endocrine, the few um, endocrine organs, the hypothalamus, pituitary and pineal gland is really about the connection to yourself. To the various levels of yourself. It is the esoteric um, functions of those three glands together is really to give you the experience that you yourself have arranged for you to have while you are in this reality. You're the one that has created all this for yourself. When you connect back to who you truly are, you can take all the learning that yourself from a much higher perspective is trying to convey to you We connect back, connect back. Yes, I know that no matter what's happening, there's a purpose. And when you truly get the purpose, then you'll be able to find the next step to create the next level of experience for yourself no matter that what that may be connect with the creator part of yourself
How is everybody doing now? I'm doing great, except Good. colon. It's talking, it's moving. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's letting go. <laughs> yes, external thoughts came in and then I just washed the nag gone back again to the I repeated myself. I choose to connect my real self. I choose to connect my real self. The true self. I have a question, um, by the way, when you said connect to the true self, yep. I connect to my higher self. Is it my true self? Is it my higher self or not? Um, okay. Kind of. So I would suggest that you tweak your language a little bit. Connect with the highest version of yourself mm -hmm. that you have access to now. Because the highest self, how much higher? It could be just, you know, slightly higher. It's still higher. <gasps> so connect with the highest version of yourself that you have access to now. Just a little tweaking. Thank you. Version of myself. Thank you. What about connecting with the heart, with my heart? Yep, you can do that too. You have this direct line to your, um, to the other parts of your soul as well. That would do. There's also the divine self. Mm -hmm. That would be the highest version. So highest version of myself, this is div uh, divine self, right? Um, what? <laughs> so my suggestion is um, try it out. So they connect to your divine self and feel how you feel. And then kind of brick state. And then the next one is try saying you want to create, um, connect to the highest version of yourself and feel and see if which one, which version do you like better? Mm. Because, um, Our divine self is a concept that is um, kind of in the collective. Mm. And that's good and bad because there's a lot of um, convolution in what divine actually means. So you are the only one who can kind of just by feeling, trying it on to know whether, like which one is your preference in this moment. So 
So did I, did I answer that? So divine self, it's a part of collective and highest version of myself. What is it? It's just part of myself, not collective. Um, that's not what I mean. Divine, your divinity is so, the word divine, um, it means something different depending on your experience of what divine means. <sighs> then what I'm saying, for some people, God is a convoluted word. Because in the Bible, when they say God, they're not actually referring to the creator. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like for myself. I wouldn't use God. I would use Creator. Mm. But that's my understanding. So it's unique to me. Someone else, God, may feel fine. They have no issue with it. So you have to find the right words depending on your own understanding and experience. That's what I mean. Because the divine, that is a word that's in the collective. So when you say divine, you know, everybody knows what you're talking about. However, the definition of um, divine is kind of very murky. whereas if you say the highest version of yourself that you have access to now that's for me is more clear there's more clarity but that's just me so you have to try on different words and see because the, the words you use actually creates a different state in your body. Mm. So that's what I mean by you have to use the words, try it on, see how your body feel, and then use a different word to find the best words for you. And it, it's something that is unique to you. Is that clearer? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I do feel that we are done. Um, <laughs> For <not> today. <laughs> processing. <laughs> but I think that's, um, yeah, I think I have... Um, put in enough in the field for you, for all of you to process, because your body is still processing. Thank you. The energy you. is still Thank moving. You. I could, I can feel that. We just want to check in with everyone. Um, everyone is still feeling okay. Any headaches that is so bothersome that would like some help with it, or are you all good now? I, I still have a little bit of a headache. Okay. Um, when you say headache, which part of your head? Left, right? Frontal okay. and top. Front and top. Yeah. Front and where? Top. <sighs> top. It's, it's, a, it's a pressure at the front, even for myself, too. It's just a front here at the front lobe. It's a oh, little okay. bit of pressure. It's not a headache. And then on the, on the top, that's what she's saying. Right. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So 
there is a disc, or, or I should say an, an energy disc in that area that is not spinning fast enough. So just ask that area to spin faster. Okay. How is that? Yeah, I think things are moving. Yeah. So keep doing that. Yeah. Um, there's, because we we're doing clearing. So when you clear, there's more energy that is coming in. So you get, you're getting a bigger download. That's why um, when you spin your energy um, around you, it actually allows you to let's, to kind of process the energy, the bigger load that's coming in. So that's, okay. that's what I got. Okay. So simply, we just simply say that uh, spin faster and that, that pressure will go away. Um, it usually will. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's just here and it, yeah, it is like when you say disc, like I can feel that there is a disc. So like a record, the old record. This, yeah. <laughs> exactly like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, this two. Can you check with my stomach? It's like toward any energy center. It hurts. It hurts. Okay. Okay, so the word I'm hearing is anxiety. Anxiety. Let us breathe in. And just breathe out. Let go of some anxiety. How is that going now? I'm done. Okay. All good. <laughs> thank you, Vinny. Thank you. Okay. Yes, good. thank you. You're welcome. So drink lots of water because when we're doing energy work, um, water really helps your body to and of recalibrate. Mm. Uh, feel okay. strong energy. Yeah. Thank you, Vinny. Yes, thank you yeah. so much. Thank this you. was thank you so much. Amazing. Yeah. Thank, thank, you, thank you, Vinny. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I really need to go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you doing okay there, Trevor? You've been very quiet, aren't I? Yeah, thanks very much, Winnie. Beautiful, thank you. Okay, wonderful. wonderful. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Winnie.